Hello and welcome to SAP ABAP Object Oriented Programming Tutorial. I'm glad to have you here with me. My name is Lukman Hakim. I'm an SAP ABAP consultant and also an ABAP trainer. I will share my knowledge about object oriented programming. And in this chapter, we will learn about the overview of object oriented programming and then the differences between object-oriented programming approach and procedural programming approach. Okay, let's start this chapter. In SAP ABAP, there are two approaches in developing a program, procedural programming approach and object-oriented programming approach. Procedural programming approach is based on function call. If you call a function module or subroutine in your program, it means you use procedural programming approach. Object-oriented programming approach is based on instantiation of a class. If you create an instance of a class in your program, it means you use object-oriented programming approach. Many of ABAP developers still have more experiences with procedural programming approach than object-oriented programming approach. And SAP has supported object-oriented programming approach from a long time ago. So, there are many of SAP features using this programming approach, such as BEDI, reporting, WebDINPRO, and so on. And of course, there will be more of SAP features by using this programming approach. So, as SAP developer, you have to master this programming approach if you want to always be on top of SAP technologies. Object-oriented programming approach is more powerful in data management than procedural programming approach. Why? I will show you in the next slide. This image shows us the concept of function module that is one of procedural programming approach in SAP ABAP. We see that several function modules are grouped into one function group or one function group can contain one or more function modules. A function group also contains data declarations or data objects. These data objects are feasible only to function modules and programs inside the function group and not accessible to programs outside the function group. A function group also contains subroutines and screens. These subroutines and screens are also feasible only to function modules and programs inside the function group. For example, we have a function group animal. This function group animal contains two function modules, animal underscore run and set underscore animal underscore data. The function group animal also contains two data objects or data declarations, v underscore name and v underscore leg. These data objects are visible only to function module animal underscore run and set underscore animal underscore data and not accessible to programs outside the function group animal. Function module set underscore animal underscore data is to set data object v underscore name and v underscore leg based on input parameters. And function module animal underscore run is to read data object v underscore name and v underscore leg and write them to the screen. For example, we have Z program for executing or for calling function modules in function group animal. In the Z program, there is a function module call set underscore animal underscore data with exporting parameter chicken and two. This will set the data objects in function group animal. And after that, there is a function module called animal underscore run. And this will display the data objects. 
And after that, there is a function module called set underscore animal underscore data for the second time, but with different parameters. And then after that, there is a function called animal underscore run again. We will see what will happen in the memory if this Z program is executed. When the Z program is run, the instance of Z program is created and loaded into memory. And when function module set underscore animal underscore data is run, the whole function group animal is created and loaded into memory. And the data objects of function group instance are set to chicken and two. And when function call animal underscore run is executed, the result will be hello, I'm chicken, I'm running with two legs. The word chicken and two are taken from the data objects of function group animal instance. What will happen if function module set underscore animal underscore data is executed for the second time? but with different parameters? Will the new instance of function group animal be created again? The answer is not. In procedural programming approach, only one instance of a function group is created per internal session. It is different with object-oriented programming approach. When function call set underscore animal underscore data is executed with different parameters, the existing data are replaced by new data. And when function call animal underscore run is executed, the result will be, hello, I'm horse, I'm running with four legs. The word horse and four are taken from the data objects of function group animal instance. From this illustration, we can conclude that in procedural programming approach, a function group instance is only created once per internal session. It is different with object-oriented programming approach that can be created several instances of a class per internal session. We will see the illustration of object-oriented programming approach in the next slide. The main concept of object-oriented programming is a class. A class is like a blueprint. We can create an instance or an object from a class. A class has attributes and methods. Attributes are characteristics of a class. For example, name of animal, number of leg, and so on. Methods are behaviors of a class. For example, class animal has methods run, jump, and so on. For example, we have a class animal. The class animal has two attributes, name for storing name and leg for storing number of legs the animal has. The class animal also has two methods set underscore data for setting the value of attributes name and leg and method run for displaying the result. For example, we have Z program for object creation of class animal and also for calling methods of class animal. In the Z program, there is an object creation of class animal and then calling method set underscore data and method run. And then there is object creation of class animal for the second time and then calling method set underscore data and method run again. We will see what will happen in the memory if this Z program is executed. When the Z program is executed, the Z program is loaded into memory. And when the first object creation of class animal is executed, an instance or an object of class animal is created in the memory with name r underscore chicken. 
And when method call set underscore data is executed with parameter chicken and two, the attributes of object r underscore chicken are set to chicken and two. And when method call run is executed, the result will be I'm chicken, I'm running with two legs. The word chicken and two are taken from attributes of object r underscore chicken. And then when the second object creation of class animal is executed, an instance or an object of class animal is created again in the memory with name r underscore horse. When method call set data is executed with parameters horse and for, the attributes of object r underscore horse are set to horse and for. And when method call run is executed, the result will be I'm horse, I'm running with four legs. The word horse and for are taken from attributes of object r underscore horse. From this illustration, we can conclude that in object-oriented programming approach, several instances or objects of a class can be created in an internal session. This makes object-oriented programming approach more powerful in data management than procedural programming approach. Okay, this is the end of this chapter. I hope you understand the concept of object-oriented programming. See you again in the next chapter. Thank you.